Yeah. I'm going to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> what you really want is to keep this. <laughs> or it. <laughs> oh, hey, we're just about to start here. All right, yeah. just give me a head. All right. All right, <coughs> sounds good. You good to go? Anytime. Okay. I just wanted to uh, thank you all for being here. Um, first, my name is uh, James Cook. I'm a civil litigation lawyer in Windsor, Ontario. Uh, seated to my left is uh, Mr. Langlois, uh, whose name I know you all know. Um, sir, uh, my clients asked me to read a brief statement, and then uh, both of us will take uh, some of your questions. I want to say first that my client wouldn't be here at all if certain disparaging remarks hadn't been made by persons who don't have the courage to put their names behind what they say. Secondly, I'd like to point out that when the people of Windsor are looking at this, they should keep in mind that there is a long history with this city administration of people leaving or being terminated. I think that what happened here should be viewed in that context. In fact, my client's predecessor, who was a staff auditor but acting in the role of lead auditor, has made similar complaints of a toxic work environment at City Hall. There were two allegations made by anonymous sources, apparently from City Hall, that my client wants to address. First, there was an allegation that he failed to address outsourcing. That allegation is completely untrue. I'm in mean, His employment contract, which he was forced to sign over a month after he started work, provided that he had 90 days to deal with the outsourcing requirement. If not, he could be terminated without any severance pay. He was not terminated. Second, my client submitted an RFP directly to the mayor for approval on May 30, 2011. To this day, no action has been taken by the mayor or council with respect to that RFP. The second allegation deals with complaints about my client's conduct around the workplace, and they're not specified any more than that. Again, this is an allegation that is made by an anonymous person lacking the courage to put their name to their statements. Not once was anything ever said to my client about his so-called conduct. Inevitably, however, a person in my client's position is bound to ruffle a few feathers. That's part of his job. I should also add that neither at his meeting, where he was terminated, nor in the letter terminating his employment, was my client ever informed of the reasons for his termination. He did ask and was never told. Instead, he learned about these so-called reasons in the newspaper and on the radio and television. The mayor is quoted in Today's Star as saying that he's trying to throw everything in the kitchen sink in to get more money from the city. My client hasn't commenced a lawsuit. I have no idea how a press conference or any public comments like this would result in more money from the city or anybody else. It was some anonymous source at the City Hall that forced my client to tell his version of the facts. The mayor goes on to deny that he was involved in my client's functions at City Hall. That is not true. My client was told, for example, directly by the mayor, that Enwin was not within his scope of responsibilities. This was done on more than one occasion. In addition, the mayor made thinly veiled threats to discourage my client from fully pursuing his legal obligations as Auditor General when it came to staffing reports to the mayor and council. My client had legitimate and reasonable concerns about the chairmanship of the Audit Committee. It is chaired by the current CEO of Enwin. And as there was a dispute with the mayor about whether Enwin was subject to audit by my client, there was the possibility of, at the least, an appearance of conflict given the dual roles of the chair of the audit committee. 
as well. My client felt that the perception of conflict may give the impression that my client was not operating in an independent manner as he was required to do. Now, I just want to briefly go over what his legal duties are, and they're enacted in the Municipal Act. That was done back in 2006 and amended in 2009. The Municipal Act, first of all, <clears throat> sets out my client's duties as follows. To assist counsel in holding itself and its administrators accountable for the quality of stewardship over public funds and for achievement of value for money in municipal operations. Now, this part of the Municipal Act was amended in 2009 because of undue influence of city administration and city politicians on the Auditor General, uh, not specifically in Windsor, but across the province. And it, and it was amended to provide that the Auditor General shall perform his or her <coughs> responsibilities under this part in an independent manner. It goes on in the legislative provisions <clears throat> to provide that the Auditor General may exercise the powers and shall perform the duties as may be assigned to him or her by the municipality in respect to the municipality, its local boards, and such municipally co controlled corporations and grant recipients as the municipality may specify. In other words, the obligations of the Auditor General by law are not simply limited to City Hall. <clears throat> in respect of the duty to provide information, the Act provides that the municipality, its local boards, and the municipal, municipally controlled corporations shall give the Auditor General such information regarding their pow powers, duties, activities, organization, financial transactions, and methods of business as the Auditor General believes to be necessary to perform his or her duties. And without reading uh, other provisions, the Auditor General has complete access to records of the municipality and municipally controlled corporations in order to carry out his obligations. And it goes on to provide that the, the Auditor General, uh, both during and after his employment, um, has an obligation of confidentiality with respect to those records. These are very broad powers. My client was, like his predecessor, subject to what he felt was a toxic work environment. My client feels that his role was perceived as a threat to some people in administration, on council, and on standing committees of council. In this respect, his treatment does not seem to differ from that of his predecessor. The city created this position as, a, as part of a campaign of accountability and, trans, and transparency. The Auditor General was supposed to be independent, there to receive complaints from taxpayers and employees, and legally required to assist Council in holding itself and its administrators accountable for what they do. In furtherance of that, my client prepared two reports which showed that outsourcing could triple the cost of his office. In each report, he stated he would comply with whatever council decided. The public has never seen these reports as neither the audit committee, the mayor, nor council has seen fit to release them. The mayor directly stated to my client that my client would be in the mayor's office, quote, asking what happened if the resourcing reports were issued. My client felt he was, the mayor was implying that my client would be fired if these reports were considered by council. My client prepared a risk assessment, three-year work plan, and budget. None of this made its way to the audit committee or council for public discussion. On two separate occasions, administration and the mayor refused basic information requests made by my client. The mayor discouraged any risk assessment review of the aquatic center. Just before my client was terminated, a public audit committee meeting was scheduled on January 26. The public meeting would have received public reports from my client, including a staffing report and <clears throat> the three-year work plan and budget. Instead, 
Contrary to the recommendations of my client, the meeting went in, con in, uh, in camera <clears throat> without a public session. Lastly, let me address the manner in which my client was terminated. My client never met all of counsel. In spite of his legal independence, counsel never asked him into the closed meeting at which the vote was taken to terminate him. He was never given the opportunity to tell his version of the facts. Instead, counsel chose to hear only from the very administration that my client was supposed to assist counsel in overseeing and apparently the audit committee chair. On the day of his dismissal, he was called to the city solicitor's office and in the presence of the city solicitor was dismissed by an outside lawyer. He was never told the reasons for his dismissal. On the contrary, his questions about why he was being dismissed went unanswered. In his letter, of, his letter of dismissal makes no reference to any specific reason for his dismissal. Instead, he now reads the so-called reasons like everyone else in Windsor in the newspaper or hears it on the radio and television. <clears throat> My client is told that he will receive no severance pay and has not received any severance pay unless he signs a release, which is effectively a gag order, and requires him to release any and every claim he may have against the city. In the release, he's told he cannot disclose the terms of his severance. Nevertheless, the same nameless sources that disparage my client <coughs> anonymously also disclose exactly what the contract says about severance pay. My client has never held a press conference. He's never had the need. And all he seeks today is to set the record straight with respect to his dismissal and his work at the city. That's the uh, statement. If you guys have any questions, go ahead. So there will be no lawsuit? I didn't say there wouldn't be a lawsuit, but there isn't any now. What do you mean by that? Do you no lawsuit has been commenced at this time, and, and my client and I, in due time and at a time of our choosing, will consider whether or not that's appropriate. How long do you have? Two years. To decide? Yeah. Is that a possibility, Todd? Certainly it's a possibility, but uh, again, we'll discuss it and, and we'll cross that bridge when we get there. How are you feeling about the whole situation? Well, I certainly don't feel great about it. Um, I think I was just trying to do my job uh, the way the, the Act uh, provided in an independent manner, and I, I, don't feel, I don't feel I was able to do that. So, obviously, I'm not happy about it. Was there ever any formal request to look into the N1 books and all of that stuff? No, that, I, that was that came up after doing a, a three-year risk assessment. Uh, myself and uh, my staff member who prepared that, and and when certainly is high dollar, and um, there's a lot of public interest in it, so we uh, included it in the plan. Would have there been a formal request had you not been fired, like in the very near future? Formal request by who? Are you referring by to? By your that? office to look at the books and how much power do you have to look at those books? Uh, yes, it was included on my work plan, so we were planning on looking at it. How, how, how would you describe your relationship? 2012. How would you I'm sorry? How would you describe your relationship with the mayor? Um, I think it was uh, good at times. Uh, at other times, I think we. Uh, encountered some difficulties just with uh, differences of opinion, but I think that's somewhat normal. You're an independent uh, officer of the corporation with broad powers under the Municipal Act. 